All right, this next video is where the fun part begins. This is where we've gone through and we've edited our timeline. Maybe you've set it to synchronize it to music. And now you're ready to really make a difference between your edit and regular video editing where people just kind of throw things into a into a timeline and add music, maybe some text overlay. But um, this first uh, this first effect I want to show you is just called the fly through effect. And it's become really popular, especially with drone footage when you're transitioning from one scene to another. You want to kind of give this interesting look to it. So if you'll notice from here, I'm going from this this big Vista scene with my motion track text in the background, which will be in, in another tutorial. And I'm flying into my next scene, which is me and the guys inside of the van. Okay. So I really want to show you how this was set up and then even show you how you can create a preset so that going forward you can easily do this effect and it's simple as can be. So this is driven by two adjustment layers. Don't worry about this top adjustment layer. That's just my, my color settings you can see. Um, so first layer, adjustment layer I have here is set to about six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And if we look over to the left here under effect controls, the first effect you're going to want to find is called replicate. Okay. So we type replicate and it should show up under stylize replicate. And what this will do is if I turn off all my other clip settings here is it will replicate it and, and set it to a certain count. In this case, it's count of three. So let me just give this a chance to load here. So you can see with the setting applied here, turn off my background clip. I have replicated it three times. I have this grid layout now of my clip, okay? So that's the first thing you're gonna see. The next thing we're gonna need to do is add the mirror effect. And by the way, just so, just so we're clear, under replicate, make sure that that count is set to three right here. Now we're gonna take the distort mirror effect and add it. And we're gonna go through and add this individually. So the first one we add, and we're gonna have a minus 90 degree angle. And we're gonna set it roughly at 1920 and 360 for our X and Y. And my sequence settings, just for clarification, are uh, 1920 by 1080. So this will be starting to get rid of the the difference between these two top clips across your three um, grids here. So you'll notice now there's no gap there whatsoever. And then we're just going to duplicate this clip again, but we're going to change the reflection angle to 90 degrees. And that's going to now do the same thing on the bottom. Now we have no difference here between um, these clips. We just have it flipped upside down. We do it two more times. The next time we do it, we're going to set this to 180 and we're going to move this reflection center to 640 by 540. And just for clarification in the, in the above clip, I also move reflection center. These differences are 360 and 718. So make sure you're, you're just copying these values in. Um, and if you're not doing it 1920 by 1080, then just make sure you're dragging it to the very edge. Um, so you can see if I play with it here. Find that edge so that it, the clip disappears. And in my case, it was 640. And then the final one, we add this effect. I have the angle set to 360. In this case, it just shows one. And my reflection center I'd be, I'm using is 1276 and 540. So when I'm done, I have nothing, no, no jagged lines. It is one clip just mirrored three different ways. But we went. We started with the replicate here, and we've smoothed out and taken away all the edges. So you're done with this clip. Uh, what you're going to now need to do is have a second adjustment layer, and you could just copy and drag this up so that it looks like this, and then drag it back six frames, so you have a match now for it. So if I go into this adjustment layer, this is going to be what's driving the whole transition. And what we're going to need here is a transform. So again, we go up to effects. And under 
distort, we're going to find transform. And in this clip, a couple things are going on. Uh, the first thing first, I have my scale keyframed. So we're going to start at a scale of 100 and we're going to go all the way to a scale of 300. Okay? So that's across both clips. What's that, what that's doing, you notice the number is 300. Well, that's because we have three replications in our second clip and it's starting at that and, and transitioning into 300, which is right back to the full frame that we were at. So that's why how it gives it that, that fly-through effect. Um, the next thing we did here, under scale, is played with the velocity of this. And this is the key. Um, if you come in here and you adjust your velocity, you're going to want to really make it you want these to be bumped up, like right next to each other. So I'm just going to uncheck this for a second, and I'll show you how I did that. So I'm bringing in Transform again from scratch. I'm going to copy my keyframes here and say Scale there, and then I'll go over here and scale it to my 300. I'm going to select these and I'm going to hit right click, ease in, to kind of give it the ramp effect. And then I'm going to use the drop down. And what I'm going to do is pull these close to each other. So that's going to give me my velocity. And that's how you're going to have it really fly through quickly. Okay. We're still not quite done yet. I'm going to go back to my original transform here. And the last thing we need to do is we need to adjust our shutter angle. So I have my shutter angle set to 360. Um, and that's what's going to give you this motion blur. If I show you the one that I'm start that I the new transform clip that I was adding here, it's going to come in with a shutter angle of 0. But just by going up to 360, you'll see, you'll start to see the uh, motion blur take effect. It might take a second to show up here. And the last thing I forgot to mention is that once you have that set to 360, um, you're going to want to make sure that you uncheck Use Composition's uh, Shutter Angle. And so you'll take over the shutter angle. And that should establish our blur, just like that. So now if I hit play, boom, I've got my fly through, I've got my motion blur, I've got this effect of, of flying right through and basically teleporting right into my next scene. So that's the fly through. Um, if you have any questions, please post them in the video. Otherwise, hope that was helpful. And in the next clip, we'll move on to the, to the next effect.